was, albeit black time should be a bit lower than it was in qualifying because the conditions have improved, although there is a, a grey cloud now hanging overhead. 30 second board is being shown, we can see from our, our window. Five second board is now up, so we're going to be racing very shortly indeed. First time today, it's the Race Parts Historic 754 metre series. And the lights go out and away we go. And good start there by Christian Pedersen from the front row of the grid. There's Lyndon Frusten in the number 23 car making his way through. And as we watch them head up towards Richie's corner for the first time, it's Christian Pedersen that has the lead of the race. It looked like Timothy Roebuck that was up into second position. And who's that that's slotted into about fourth place? We'll try and pick up who that is in a moment. Uh, certainly someone who's made some impressive early moves as they head up, Josh, to the hairpin for the first time. I think it might have been Trevor Slatter, the uh, double race winner this season from row four that was coming up the inside that you spotted there. They make their way down to the hairpin. Pedersen leads. Then there's the two Austin sevens. Then uh, sort of the historic 750 cars through there. But we're watching some of the uh, cars trying to find some grip, which they're not doing. So Simon Gallon's Austin 7. There was massively sideways, wasn't it, through the Wilson hairpin. I'd suggest this is as damp as it was actually this morning. So this will probably be about a five-lap race uh, over the 15 minutes. It looks really, really tricky out there. Where's the grip? Well, some of them are looking on the outside, and I think that one uh, was finding the grip. But one of them hasn't. That's Mike Whitby. He has spun. Had he collected the palm curve? I think he might have just avoided it, Ian. Yeah, possibly. I think he also delayed Lyndon Thruston as well, didn't he, in the number 23 car. But there's our race leader then. That's Christian Pedersen out in front. In second place, it is the number 18 car of Tim Roebrook. That's the ex-John uh, Miles car. John, of course, the Lotus Formula 1 driver who we lost a, what, a year or so ago now. But he's being challenged there, is Tim, by number 52, Mark Elder, who started on the front of the grid as they head uh, through the left-hander at Hamilton and head down towards uh, Oggies. It's a very good battle for second place, this, isn't it? They're shortly going to be heading in through into Williams and onto the Bentley Strait. And Tim Roebuck, a quick look over his shoulder there, and he's spotted right behind him Mark Elder. Looks like this is going to be, going to be a good scrap. Yes, these two cars in qualifying were separated by one third of a second. A big, big, big slide though from Mark Elder. He saved it, uh, and on his way he goes again. But that would have lost him momentum all the way down the, uh, the back straight, the Bentley straight. I think this is the first time we've seen Elder in historic 750 formula. Yep. And uh, obviously pole within Class A this morning, but has lost the lead there within the class. And second overall to Tim Roebuck, who has won the category twice this season. Um, once at each venue, as the other driver was Al Frail in Cork, but he's a bit further down in these conditions. He qualified in 16th. There's Trevor Slatter in his contour. He qualified 7th, and he is up to 4th after that good start. So he's got ahead of Martin Depper. So it looks like in these conditions, uh, Ian, the, the historic 750 cars are the ones that are struggling to find much traction, it would seem. They're much further back than yeah. what you'd expect. Yeah, and, and certainly this season, the wins, as you've been saying, split between Trevor Slatter Slatter and Martin Depper, both in their sensors. And as we look back to this battle for second place, so far, we're going to get a change, are we, in Tamaris? It looks like Mark Elder going to go around the outside of Tim Roebuck into the left-hander, and he's done it. So Mark Elder goes up into second place then. So number 52 up into second place. Christian Pedersen quite a long way ahead already at the end of lap one. He's already been through to complete the opening lap. And he is leading then from number 52, Mark Elder, in second place. But uh, it looks like Roebuck was getting back alongside him there as they headed along the straight. And indeed, Roebuck has got back through to second place before they even get to Riches. And it is Trevor Slatter in fourth place. But this battle not over yet because back up on the inside of Roebuck goes Mark Elder as they go through Riches corner. Just backs out of it, though, I think. They now head up to the Wilson hairpin for the second time, Josh. Yeah, it's a great battle between them, isn't it? This is the first time we've been able to bring you historic 750 Formula races on um, an Alpha live stream. And it's great to have this vintage racing between these two Austin 7s. It's a great addition to the category, Mark Elder, and he's really getting involved in a good battle with Tim Roebuck. They were separated by just one hundredth of a second at the end of the first lap, which did take over three minutes. So it does look like it'll be a five-lap sprint, which is about right, isn't it, for vintage uh, mode sport. There's a yellow flag, and that's the car number 11 has had a rotation, and that is the car driven by James Miles, isn't it, one of the Austin 7s? Yeah, so James uh, recovers uh, after he, that spin. He was in 7th, so he was going well, yeah. and third within the class. He was. Um, as there you can see uh, the 62 car going through. That's uh, being driven by 
Uh, Johnny Sadler and an off. I'm afraid that looks like it's broken thrust on the thing. Give the Mawson special number one that's gone off. Got muddy tyres, certainly now. And uh, Greg and Thurston, father of Lyndon, who've also seen out, has gone off. Oh, and Timothy Robert, they're slowing all of a sudden, it seems. Yeah, that was out of Hamilton, wasn't it? Now, was that an error, or is there a car drama for him? Whatever the case is, Mark Eldridge back at through. You can see him working at the wheel um, in this Austin 7. So some great pictures. Um, we're getting thanks to the Alpha live stream of Mark Elder really working at the car. And, of course, there he is over the curve sideways. Uh, it's something you can't really do with modern cars, is it? <laughs> see how much you're at work. Well, and you can't usually see them looking over their shoulders to work out where his, uh, his playmate's gone, the guy that he was racing a minute ago. But sure enough, Tim Roebuck has come to a stop. There's another one that's uh, gone off there as well at Agostini, by the looks of it. Try and pick up who that is. It does seem like it's a problem for Roebuck, doesn't it? Because uh, it does. Mark Elder, I think, was confused more than anything where he'd gone. And now we can see the new third place car, therefore, is Trefor Slatter. And it, it, him and Martin Death were having uh, a good battle again, as they have done much for the season, Ian, but yeah. uh, not this much further behind the race leader. No, I mean, they've been disputing uh, disputing the, the victories more often than they're not. I mean, we had a couple of races for these at Anglesey uh, a month or so ago now, about six weeks ago. And really good racing actually for the historic 750 formula category primarily these two but also Lyndon Thruston was involved he led the races there for a time as well where's he at the moment we saw that he was delayed he was 13th across the line at the end of lap one um, but yeah he was very much involved as well as these two in the centaurs uh, that, that go so well Christian Pedersen goes across the line now to complete his second lap six minutes and 12 have now gone by so I think Josh is absolutely right. It's going to be a five-lap race. Here's this battle, though, for what is now third position between Trevor Slatter and Martin Depper. Martin Depper in the number eight car, the CNC supervisor from Starbridge. He's owned this car for the past uh, six years now. It took 12 months to rebuild it. Previously, it was owned by Mike Dorsett and Paul Mason, and he's going for third position here, and he's through on the inside there before they even get to the braking area for, for Riches, really. And... Uh, Martin Depper, therefore, has gone up into third position. Yeah, these two lapping pretty much on the same times they did this morning in qualifying. So I, cause it, when they had their qualifying session, that's when we just started to get the rain here at mm. Snetterton. So I think we ended up at a fairly similar point. Uh, Christian Pedersen's going slower than he did in qualifying. I think that's because he knows he doesn't need to push too hard and risk anything. Where these guys, uh, Slatter and Depper, were doing 313s, 314s, much like they were this morning. And they turn their way into Palmer, where there are yellow flags, because, of course, we saw Gwyn uh, Fruston go off, so I presume he hasn't been able to rejoin. So Palmer, we've seen two spinners there, so that must be a tricky uh, part of the circuit uh, to find the grip. So as they go down towards Agostini, coming out of that corner on the other side of the circuit there, you could see the race leader, Christian Pedersen. But there's Martin Depper turning left into the Agostini hairpin. Not the former British touring car driver, like I've seen a few people comment that it, <laughs> that it is. No, it's not. And uh, Martin Depper then turns his way out of Agostini as the driver in third position after passing Trevor Slatter. Yeah, we've lost our pictures in the commentary box at the moment, we're afraid. So hopefully we'll get those back very shortly. Um, but it is at the end of lap two. Ah, there we go. That's better. Christian Pedersen leading for Mark Elder in second. Trevor Slatter third. Martin Depper fourth. Kevin Welsh fifth. Johnny Sadler, sixth. Lyndon Fruster made up sixth place on that last lap, up to seventh place. But we're now on lap three, and we're watching Martin Depper um, really just make a bit of a break now. Indeed. So he's getting away. He was quicker than Slatter in qualifying as well. Uh, but Slatter made that good start, didn't he? Getting down the inside at Ritchie's on the opening lap. So that um, is what helped him out somewhat. And that's the second place car just going through your shot. And he really is the star of the race, isn't he, Mark Elder, in a Class A car? He leads that class after two laps by 40 seconds. Um, of course, we did see that Tim Roebuck was able to go with him earlier until his car had a problem. But uh, it's a really, really good drive from him, isn't it, to run in second place. He's only eight seconds uh, behind Christian Pedersen and he's 15 or so seconds ahead of here, Martin Depper, who turns his way out of the S's, out of Nelson. He is, as you say, getting away uh, quite comfortably now from Slatter. And the pair of them are quite a bit ahead of the rest. And that's ahead of Kevin Welsh, which might be a good card to pick up on because 
the Warren coming back to competition a couple of years ago, Ian, was a real, uh, a real treat for us here. It, it, it was, and it was a car that was uh, largely rebuilt at the race retro show as well, wasn't it, in that particular year? At the moment, watching Ian Grant. Now, he was one of those cars that was qualifying out of session. Uh, and he started to, to make some progress, and as to has Mike Whitby after his spin. So these were 16th and 17th at the start of the lap. They've just passed there. Uh, the number 42 uh, Malik uh, being driven by Tim Sage, I think. I think it was might have been the 19 okay, car, John Ingram. Pardon. Yeah, so even a bit further up the Arthur Mark II, I beg your pardon, John Ingram. Yeah. So I think uh, Tim Sage is another driver that might have been going off the back. Yeah. So they're all making their way yeah. through ahead of that at uh, the Arthur, as we say, of Ingram. Now, Ian Grant is going to lose out to Mike Whitby, the spinner from the opening lap. Yeah, Mike Whitby was 10 seconds behind Ian Grant at the start of the lap, so he mm. has made some decent progress. There's the Malik, isn't it? Just turning yeah, under the vehicle, right. bri uh, the vehicle bridge, Tim Sage. So Mike Whitby is up next, then Ian Grant, and then... Uh, John Ingram, so it's a, a big mix around from how they started the lap. But of course, a three mile lap is a very long way in these cars, which uh, obviously aren't very powerful, only have very small engines mm. 750 and 850cc generally. Well, that's it's that Archie Waterfield, I think, that's making up some ground. Uh, again, one of the, the newcomers. And yeah, that is the 28 car of Archie Waterfield. So he, with the novice cross on the back of his car, which means that he's not done the requisite number of uh, races and got signatures to take that, that novice cross off the back. Um, but he's made up another place now. Meanwhile, we watch the number seven car, which is the uh, Graham Wilson Time 3B. Again, another novice. I think he had his first races in this car at Anglesey. Qualified well. Races did not go quite so well. Uh, had a knock off a spin, I think, as well. He, he did finish third, though, in the most recent race at Anglesey. He did. He did get uh, he did get a third place there, but, uh, yeah, the first race was a bit of a disappointment, having qualified right. so well. So there it is. Um, it's been, been that the car that Anthony Reid raced, was it, at Anglesey it a few years ago? It is, and, and James Winston has raced that car as well, I think, in the past. Uh, but most recently, it's been Simon Bolter that's raced that car with some success. Mm. Yes, was in his Dyke 750 formula. Multiple winner of last season, I think yeah. it was. Yes. He was indeed. So that car running in eighth position, but James Miles, I think, is about to take the place off him by the looks of it, and he goes through at Hamilton. Down the inside, and <laughs> you can see his knees, you can see almost his whole body, can't you, yep. um, of James Miles, and that is certainly something you don't see in modern racing. You can see the uh, safety changes over the years uh, when we get to our next uh, categories. Yes. Um, but it's great to see them here, and there's, as we say, so many people are enjoying uh, themselves, even in tricky conditions, actually. Uh, you may wonder if some of the Austin 7 guys are enjoying themselves more because they're really sliding the cars about, which they probably won't be able to do in the dry to the degree that they are. You can see James Mould again just looking over his shoulder, then trying to duck in to give it the best uh, or the, the least uh, deficit of aero going down the straights. So because, of course, with so little power, any, uh, if your head sticks out, you're going to slow the uh, car down in a straight line. Christian Pedersen's just gone across the line to complete his fourth lap, so he's now starting his final lap of the race because it's a 15-minute race. We've already had 12 and a half minutes or so, and he's a long way clear of the second-place car, which is still number 52, Mark Elder. Third being number eight, Martin Depper. Fourth, 72, Trevor Slatter. Kevin Welsh, fifth, number 78 in the Warren, which we were talking about briefly, and sixth, number 62, Johnny Sadler. But watching James Miles at the moment now pin to eighth place. And he's pulling away, isn't he, from Graham Wilson. Lyndon uh, Thruston will be the next car if he's going to catch any. There's the Warren we spoke about, Kevin Welsh. He's being caught rapidly by Jonathan Sadler. This was a 14-second gap at the beginning of the lap. And behind them is Lyndon Thruston catching them. And I think down the straight, Kevin Welsh may lose out here to Jonathan Sadler because Sadler has accelerated past. And there's the Malik, uh, the U2 of Tim Sage that's had a spin. But up into fourth, uh, fifth position, it'll be for Jonathan Sadler. So he has gained a place. He started in 12th, so it's been a good drive from Sadler. And Welsh loses another place by the time they get to Richie's. Yeah, so Lyndon Thruston, number 23, in that sort of beige-coloured car, up into sixth position, although Welsh will try and fight back in the Warren as they head into Richie's corner for the final time in this race, up towards the Wilson hairpin they go. This the battle also for what will be fourth position within Class C. Uh, so going wide there is Sadler, and they're almost three abreast on the exit of the 
Wilson Hairpin because of that, heading now down to the left hander at Palmer. Sadler, number 62, who's done various racing in the VSCC as well, continues to, to hold on to the position for the moment. They turn their way through the left hander at Palmer, getting away now from Kevin Welsh and onwards uh, towards the left hand hairpin at Agostini. So that's the battle for fourth position. And they make fifth their position, I beg your pardon. Make their way down towards Agostini then. It was a fourth position in class that yes. we were going for, wasn't it? That, yeah. That's well, well done, well retrieved. <laughs> so they turn their way then. Oh, there he is, sideways and a spin for um, Thruston there. So that will give Kevin Welsh that place back that he lost a moment ago. And there's James Miles in the Austin 7, so he's going to be pretty much with them too. But very shortly, Christian Pedersen will be back through to complete and finish the race. So uh, Christian Pedersen about to take his first victory of the season after... Um, a second at Anglesey and a third at Mallory Park. And the 15 minutes is up. And as we watch the battles a bit further back, he will take the flag. So James Miles did get ahead of Thruston, but there is the race leader, Ian. Yeah, so Christian Pedersen out of Murray's for the final time. And one driver there who is going to go on to his final lap. But the chequered flag is made ready. And Christian Pedersen, led by 11 seconds at the end of the previous lap, over the line he goes to take the chequered flag and win the first race of the day here on the Snetterton 300 circuit. The race parts historic 750 Formula Series scratch race. We've got another race for these later on, but Pedersen getting his first win of the season, waiting for the second place car to come through. Well, that should be Mark Elder, but there's a, a pall of smoke that he's left and he's going to pull in. He's going into the pits. Oh, this is disaster for Mark Elder, who's going to take the Class A win, but something's gone wrong at Murray's on the final lap and he's into the pit lane and therefore uh, he will not be able to take uh, second position. Uh, so that should promote Martin Depper up to third. James Miles there ahead of Lyndon Thurston. There's Martin Depper. So we get second position, I should say. And that means James Miles is going to win Class A, I think, for the first time uh, for him. So that'll end up being a good result, although it's going to come at rather misfortune first for Tim Roebuck earlier in the race. Yeah. And then right in the dying stages for Mark Eld, who might actually take the flag in the pit lane, but not sure if that will actually count to a classification. No, it'd be a bit, a bit, a bit of a Schumacher feel about it, wouldn't it, if that was the case. Here then comes Trevor Slatter to take... Uh, third place away in his centaur. Fourth is going to be Johnny Sadler, another centaur. So three centaurs in a row there. Then you've got the Warren in fifth place of Kevin Welsh, number 78. And then inside the top six and winning Class A is James Miles then in his uh, Austin 7 special, just ahead of seventh place, number 23. Uh, that's Lyndon Thruston. And then the rest of them can be, should be uh, eventually, but not quite yet, uh, well, Graham Wilson has come through with Simon Gallinger behind him. They're eighth and ninth, and then the next car will be Charlie Plain Jones. There he is now, just taking the, taking the checkered flag, Josh. Indeed, just to give us an idea of how tricky it is out there, Christian Pedersen is half a minute off of the lap record set by Michael Harvey, uh, which is a long, long way, isn't it? And then in Class A, the lap record stood with Ian Grad at 254, which is what. Uh, not quite such a big margin of what the Class A fastest lap was, a 3.07. So the Austin 7 is about 13 seconds off the lap record, but the Class C car is half a minute. Mm, uh, absolutely. It's uh, quite a disparity, isn't it, really? The marshal away from the chequered flag will have a sore arm, I think, <laughs> by, by, by the end of the day. Um, but most of the cars have completed their race. The 11th place car just going across the line now. I can tell you that was Charlie, uh, it was uh, Archie Waterfield. So he's gone through. In 12th place is uh, Alf Railing Cork, number 21. And then I think the next car people might whip it as you can see here uh, this weekend. The car's being taken off the circuit on the exit of Palmer Corner and they pull into Park Fermé there. So they don't do a full slowing down lap uh, as they used to, used to do here on the 300 circuit. And that means that, uh, that we do get to hear from the drivers a little bit quicker than we already would. So let's head down for the first time today to Park Fermé and we'll hear from Matt Suckling uh, with the winning drivers. Yeah, thanks very much, guys. We're down here with our race winner, which is Christian Pedersen from that historic 750 Formula race. Uh, Christian, great race out there. Very demanding out front. How did you enjoy that? Uh, it was absolutely brilliant. I was lucky enough to, uh, to qualify on pole and I got a good getaway. So... Uh, had a had a bit of a lead uh, going down the back straight, so I was quite happy and uh, uh, tried to control the race from then on. 
And in terms of the conditions out there, we know they're not quite um, as they should be. I think you're about 30 seconds off the, the pace of what you should be normally. But um, you did well, and you're looking forward to the handicap race later on. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be good fun. It's, um, I normally um, don't do very well in the handicap races, so I'm just going out to enjoy myself. It will be harder, of course, because the, the point of a handicap race is you start towards the back and a couple of laps down. But it's going to be great fun, especially around this circuit. Yeah, and especially with the... Uh, with the other drivers that we got here, it's, uh, it's always good to, um, to do a good hard battle with them because they're, they're fair drivers, they're good drivers. Well done, Christian. Good luck for this afternoon and well done today. Thank you. There we go. Our race winner for that one is Christian Pedersen and we look forward to the handicap race a little bit later on.